If you're listening to this, you found a transmission from the bunker codes. None of this is medical, dental, vision, legal, financial, or any other advice about anything. We're all on the same team and just want to be left alone. Enjoy. Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of I'm Gonna Talk and You're Gonna Listen. And I know I keep saying, this is my last one for a while. I've said that over the last two. I know. Um, but two things. It's because I'm never really for sure in my mind, like, how wrapped up my affairs in my mind, my thoughts in my mind are. I'm never really sure about that. For starters. And, um... I'm never really sure how much time I have, so um, this one really will be my last one at, at, at a minimum uh, for a couple weeks. Uh, <clears throat> quite frankly, though, not sure if it matters. There's like two people, I think, that listen to these, so if you're one of those two people, then, you know, thank you. If If the show isn't too scary, maybe share it with somebody if it's too over the edge though and you want to keep it to yourself i i completely understand so just like usual i have like a side topic and a main topic and i'm, I'm i've been trying to do better at, at telling people the topic but i'm also never really sure how it's gonna go so the side topic and I know some of these are like repeat topics, but it's because I, I rethink about them. I'm sorry for the, the pill noises. I'm fighting off a bug right now. Me and my wife both got a bug somehow. One of those summer, summer bugs that's going around. So, side, the side topic is the recurring theme that I like to revisit called, what if I'm, what if I'm wrong? I think that's a healthy, uh, especially for YouTubers, anyone who does podcasts that has any kind of opinion, I think they should be continually checking themselves. What if they're, what if they're wrong? What if I'm wrong? You know, check, check my messaging. Like, is my, check my, my optics. Like, am I... Am I sending, like, the, the message that I really am intending on sending? So, that's going to be the main one. Uh, and the follow-up one is I want to talk about the housing bubble. And I'm still on the fence as to what the housing market's going to do. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you why. So, part one. Part one. What if I'm wrong? So, this is gonna segue into the housing thing really well. Let me get let me get comfortable. I hope I hope you're comfortable. I hope you're having a fantastic day, night, weekend. I don't even know what fucking day it is anymore. To be quite frank, I um I I wake up every morning and have no clue what day it is or what time it is. I'm just uh. Which is weird, that's not quite like burnout. It's just like survival. I'm I've I've exited burnout and I'm back into survival mode. Which sounds counter counterintuitive, but that means I'm slowly getting better. I'm I'm out of burnout mode and into survival mode. I was in hollowed out husk mode. For quite a while, so I'm I've improved by two, and then after survival mode's normal mode, but I'm gonna be in survival mode for at least several more weeks. But that's okay. Um, so what if I'm wrong? Excuse me. Um, they could still make everybody come back to the office 
they were there's this this whole concept of like being in the eye of the storm or i've been calling them like fla- f- uh, false plateaus lately we're we're definitely in the eye of a storm right now where it seems like everything's okay relatively except for fuel prices which are hovering just below six dollars a gallon which is <laughs> oh god it's just so terrible it's so terrible um to know that we're in the eye of the storm right now although it's weird right because like even though fuel's astronomically high the price of a barrel of oil is down so it means that i guess we're refilling our stock reserves which is okay i mean i mean not okay that's good but that's insane because it's not translating to how the pump is it it seriously went up like 30 cents last week so it's it's hard for me to say like what if i'm wrong right now but i'm gonna try like there's 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 a couple of definitive things that are absolutely happening the commercial sector is going to crash and burn and the banks are going to crash and burn underneath the weight of nobody going back to commercial the cities are completely overran uh that is not fixing itself they're trying to do some stuff about the drug thing like i guess they arrested some fentanyl people in our favorite our favorite country in the world china um but like that's not probably going to make a dent in anything but so they could so so what if i'm wrong basically like what if they make everybody come back anyway and the reason why i bought up like the false plateau earlier is because what they do is they they lure everybody into a false sense of security and they kind of like if you're a fisherman woman you know excuse me they they like let the line run out right they let the fish think it's it's okay but the whole time it's like hooked right so they let us think maybe we will just let you like work from home no they're going to try to reel us back in as soon as we let our guard down as soon as we have false sense of security it's going to be the same thing with like the vax mandates the vax mandates can 100 percent come back tomorrow they could finger snap those back into existence in like two seconds as soon as the court cases are done um because they don't have to have a rhyme or a reason for anything anymore it's a corptocracy where you know you've got a uniparty that's also directly in control of the private sector so it's not a capitalist society anymore it's a, i don't know it's what i call a corptocracy where you've got like the lobby controlling the government and the government being having like this symbiotic relationship with corporate anyway so i have to pick and choose my words carefully because there's some things i can't talk about there's some things now unfortunately that i do know that i wish i didn't know but i can't talk about those things so i'm trying to talk about things from like a more more like in line with my usual approach they're going to try to make us come back in the office for sure they probably will not be able to because they're going to lose more people if they do that however it has been shown time and time again that and we'll use anheuser-busch uh you know bud bud light you know we'll use them as a prime example these think tank and target like these think tanks whoever they are with their strategic philanthropizing have no problem destroying a multi-billion trillion dollar corporation that employs tens of thousands of people <clears throat> they have no problem tanking one or two companies with just the sickening things they do 
and don't get me wrong i don't care if they want to have if they want to sell coffee mugs that say gender fluid i think that's freaking hilarious um but like like i said last episode when they start messing with bathrooms um or when they have um certain spokespeople who um are portraying something that's like ludicrously inappropriate and on on every level like worse worse than what i think like the average person understands they know it's bad but they don't know why it's bad <sighs> you know they don't mind tanking a corporate the point is is like bad decisions do not phase them okay so if they have to lose 20 percent more of their workforce to force everybody come to come back in the office they will well, they'll try. Problem is, a lot of people have moved out. So, they might be thinking, okay, well, we can backfill these with, you know, tech, tech sector, laid off tech sector. Here's the problem, though. The tens of thousands of laid off tech sector employees is only the beginning um you know ai is going to lay off huge chunks of software engineers it's going to lay off almost all hr and almost all um diversity equity and inclusion like all that is is going to essentially cease to exist so they won't need you know the second order effects of that they won't need all the people coming to everybody's works getting paid thousands and thousands to tell everybody how they should feel sad for themselves and how they have been keeping everybody else down subconsciously. All that's going to go away. It's going to cease to exist. It's going to unemploy hundreds of thousands of people almost overnight. And all those fake jobs that they act like exist, those are all just going to go away. So what if I'm... So what if I'm wrong? Like, what what does like the corporate landscape? What would the corporate landscape look like? They would try to use less and less HR people and less and less recruiters because they've laid like ninety percent of the recruiters off or some absurd thing like that. And they're going to try to use AI, right? So you're trying to get a job. Hopefully you live local to something. Hey, thank you. Doing I'm doing a poured poured course, but uh, appreciate that. So if you're if you're lucky enough to live in a city, then you might. Oh, there's more of you. Thank you so much. All right, so pretend that you live in the city where the grass is green and the meth needles are pretty. I know there's no meth needles. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, like, you know, you have to go. You you know, I can apply for this because I can go into the office and somehow either you live with five people or you still live with your parents or maybe you live in an RV. I don't know. Or maybe you live in one of those, like, new tiny homes that, you know, or you live in somebody's garage that they renovated into a teeny tiny like you know 400 square foot 300 square foot garage or something you know so some for somehow somehow you can afford you know to live close enough uh and you know your bike you know your car has been stolen so many times that insurance won't get you a new one whatever so you know you're riding your bicycle and hope to god nobody steals your bicycle so you know so you're, you know, you can somehow get to the office. So to to get hired, your your resume has to get through an AI. You're gonna get interviewed by an AI, and then, you know, you're gonna be dealing with within 24 hours, you know, 200 plus submissions, most of which are gonna be like automated auto submissions. You know, 
most of those will probably flesh out. You know, you might, if you're lucky, you know, if you have 20 versions of the resume or if your AI resume writer is really fast, you know, you might be able to, you know, somehow, somehow get through the AI, you know, resume reader and then get through the AI interview interviewers because they you know they can scan your face and shit now basically you talk to the ai it records you and scores you you get to the real interview you know you might get tw a 20 minute interview you know or you you had better be like ultra concise and better be up all, on all like the latest and greatest interview techniques because you're going to be being interviewed by the majority of the people that are inter interviewing you aren't going to want to interview you because they hate interviewing and a lot of them hate being managers because somehow through these huge collapses all the pieces of shit manage to get retained which blows my mind you'd think in a crunch they could like afford decent people, but it's still like total nepotism. Everybody's brother and sister and person they can't fire because they know that some other person gave some other person, you know, some, some favors, blah, blah. You know, they know where all the, some, you know, you got to deal with the asshole that knows where all the skeletons are buried. And so you, you know, you deal with all that stuff. Like maybe you can get a job by some miracle and hopefully you're not, like a piece of shit. Chances are you're going to be starting completely buried and the department that you're in is going to be way, way in over their head. They're going to be super stressed out because they're already going to be so swamped and you're actually going to be like a net negative because now they have to stop because they're already buried and they're going to have to stop and train you to try to get you up to speed. And if you have any common sense at all, from the day you start, you are already counting down the days. Um, 365, 364, 363, that you're going to be leaving. Because as thankful that you should be as you have that job, they're not going to give you a raise. There isn't going to be any retention. You're going to be leaving in a year. Which means in about 10 months, you're going to be trying to interview and shit, and you're going to be trying to line something up. Because the only way that you're going to get a raise, any sort of retention, more than a 2%, 3 if you're lucky, you know, if you want your, like, 5 10% to hopefully keep up with, like, the insane inflation and interest rates is to move jobs. Which means you're going to have to do all that shit all over again every year probably for the rest of your life i don't know of any job anywhere that is paying anybody retention level amounts of money to keep up with inflation right now unless unless you have like broken that threshold to like the higher end of what used to be considered uh the middle middle america uh whatever that word i always forget middle middle income whatever it's called middle the the middle the middle group that doesn't exist anymore like to be to be at the upper end of that to kind of like break out of that used to be like over 400,000 because that's where they like had set the tax limits at that 400,000 quickly turned to three and turned to two just like they said and so now to live in most cities to live to, to not be living paycheck to paycheck you have to be making about 300,000 a year <clears throat> 300,000 a year which means you had better own a business that hope to god nobody can like easily replicate in the hope that everybody that you support will be also recession proof good luck with that or you've got to be at the upper echelons which is highly unlikely because that's like less than one percent or you've got to be job hopping every year so 
so let's, you know, pretend I'm wrong and that you can actually somehow make all that work. Not talking about like the gender gap or like any of those things because, or, or, you know, if you decide to have a kid or something like those are all going to throw snags in it too, or, you know, pretend you don't get thrown out or that, you know, your house doesn't get burned down in a riot or your RV or like whatever, like you're going to be struggling. The reason why people aren't, the reason why a lot of people aren't feeling the struggle right now is because a lot of those people are living in like pre-pandemic pricing with like pre-pandemic interest rates. And I want you to keep that in mind for the next segment. And a lot of people, when they're selling their houses right now, they have this funny shenanigan, this little cute little scam that they pull where they are selling their houses at a really, really, really high amount. But they have found some scam loophole thing where they can sell their house at what their interest rate used to be. So they're selling their house for like, you know, half a million, 600,000. But they're selling it like at no interest. And if the bank catches on, not only can you lose your house, but both people that do it can end up owing like the whole amount, which unless you're freaking BlackRock or something, you're not going to be able to pay for that bullshit. So keep in mind, a lot of people that are quote unquote making it right now, unless they're over 300 K a year, which isn't impossible by the way. Like if you change jobs every year and you go up five to 10% every year, you can make $300,000, you know, within like 10 or 15 years. Like, you you can. A lot of people, you know, there was a lot of those $15 an hour morons. You know, first it was 10, then it was 15. You know, pretty soon, you know, minimum wage is going to be like 100000 a year, and they still won't even be able to afford a cheeseburger. Like, $300,000 is like barely making it, you know. 100,000 is like the new minimum wage in the city, which is nothing. That's it's barely enough to make rent, right? They they're they're having to cap rent. Here here you want you want some perspective because you're telling me I'm wrong and that 100,000 would make you rich or whatever bullshit. They're having to cap rent. At something like 10 to 15 percent because that's how much the landlords in the cities are raising their rent per year so if you don't think that you know i'm insane because i'm saying that you should be trying to increase your your compensation by 10 percent a year your landlord is trying to raise your rent 10% a year. It is because inflation and taxes are going up by that much. Not because, you know, they're some psychopath. But because the banks are hurting so bad right now that they are raising rent on anybody who can still afford a commercial real estate because they assume because you can afford it that they can just jack your rent up forever well it's the same thing you lived in manhattan oh yeah but the funny thing is like manhattan dc uh most of the major cities in the pacific northwest like residential is getting gobbled up there's still tons of commercial though uh that's like 40 between 40 to 60 percent like vacant commercial nobody's buying it the prices are still insanely high and the thing is, like, the banks are right. If you can afford somewhere in the city, you can afford to just have your rate jacked up forever. You have to. What if you're a hotel? You have to be able to afford it. What, what are you going to do? You, not have your hotel next to the airport? You're just going to close down and there's just going to be no airport next to the hotel anymore? 
or no hotel next to the airport anymore. Like, people that try to argue with me about this cannot think for themselves for, like, 10 seconds. Like, if you've ever flown... Oh, gosh, that's... That's, uh... That's dark. Uh, however, uh, you're, you're spot on because uh, we saw a place and it was clear that, that like, no, nobody had ever lived there. Like, the garbage can, the inside of the garbage can for to, to take it out to the road was, was clean. It was clean, and it was full of water. And like, oh, nobody's lived here. And it's like, yeah, because they're, they're dead. They never even got to move in. House has just been sitting. And yes, that that's kind of like my point, is that you can make a lot of money living in the city. However, you have to pay exorbitant amounts of money living there because they assume that since you live there, you're making you're making metric shit tons of money, which means kind of how I started this. Like, you know, what if I'm wrong? You know, you, if you're living in the city, you had better be planning on making ten to fifteen percent more per year, because that is what they're going to be trying to extract, extort out of you. And you better plan on losing your car over and over and over again and getting mugged and robbed and shot at and your shit stolen and your door getting kicked in. And you said, and you said uh, or commute, and then they raise the rent around the city. So not only that, but they will, uh, they will put tolls everywhere. And they will try to trick you into paying taxes that you don't even owe. And only to find out they've been overpaid on taxes for so long that they actually owe everybody taxes back. Going back like 10 years. Because they can't even pay their taxes. Like all the, all the COVID relief stuff, they never even used that money. Everybody lost their houses and businesses and shit and they find out that like the COVID relief funds weren't even used. Well, so not only does Manhattan have the toll roads, but they also have the subway system, which is heavily taxed, and it goes up every year. And ev not everybody, but a lot of people have stopped paying it. But in order to in order to make those changes, like everybody has to stop paying it. But you know they want to put RFIDs on your cars, and they probably you know they probably want to chip you. So every time you go into the subway. It just auto tolls you. Or what if you have, you know, three people in your car and you go over a toll bridge and you all are like have RFID chips in your body and you just when you come home, the money is just deducted out of your bank account. And you might some people might think, Oh, that's that's super easy and that's super simple. Yeah, but like what if they charge you wrong? What if they double charge you or something? There's like no way you're ever gonna get that money back. And they would, you're right, they would have to chip people. They would have to. And it will start with having virtual SIM cards on your phones, just like they did with the Vax passports. And they will have to chip everybody because companies will not, well, and social services will not be able to stay afloat unless they chip everybody. It's the same thing with like all the looting and stuff like looting looting wouldn't stop if they chipped everybody because they've had to close down all of the automated stores in Seattle but if they chipped everybody until the bad guys destroyed the chip readers you could totally tell everybody who's looting your store not that anyone would do anything about it cuz they won't cuz those people don't have any money probably They're stealing the shit, and then they're selling it, and they're probably immediately using the cash for drugs or whatever. I mean, and if you throw them in jail, what what good does that do? 
But like, that's that's the problem. Like, you could have like the biggest surveillance state in the world, and it doesn't matter because the political will doesn't exist. With just the horrible violence going on right now. And you're right. The 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 end game of all this is gonna have to be universal basic income. Because interest rates again going back to like this little false plateau right now, like they didn't up interest rates for the first time in a really long time. Well, they're already saying they're going to bump interest rates up at least two more times this year. UK already bumped theirs up like half a point. I can't remember what EU did, but they have this whole like false narrative about how interest rates, you know, we're almost there. We're almost there. We just need, you know, people are hoarding money and people can still afford shit because, you know, they still have money left over from the Rona, the Rona times. Like, no. No, what's happening is, is you've got, like, a two-tiered society right now. You've got people with houses that are pre-COVID houses with no interest rates. And then you have the other half of the population, these California idiots, with super overbloated houses with, like, super high interest rates. And they're trying to run those people out of money. They're actively trying to run those people out of money. And they're, try they're trying to milk them for all they're worth. Because if they can milk down everybody who bought houses during the Rona, if they can milk them all down to how screwed everybody it would be with low that, that are on low interest rates right now, that if they were on higher interest rates, they can level those two groups out. See, right now, the the, the economic groups have to fight two battles. They have to fight, fight people with no interest rates, and they have to fight people with really high interest rates. And so they're punishing one group to get to the other group. And they're not going to stop until all of the people who bought houses pre-COVID that are on really low interest rates, they're not going to stop jacking up interest rates until they've crushed those people. And you might go, well, how do they do that? Well, they're going to make everything so expensive that they're going to have to get more credit. They're going to make them go into debt. They want everybody in debt. And how are they going to do that? They're going to unemploy everybody. Everybody's going to be unemployed. It's going to be like COVID all over again. They're going to unemploy you, and if you don't shut down, they'll have their jackbooted thugs come and burn your building down. And uh, your your big warehouse store comment, 100%. What they're going to do, because theft is so high, is they're going to lock down those big warehouses and then they're either going to deliver or they're going to make you, you know, go there and pick your stuff up, but you won't be able to go inside. They'll be like giant distribution centers. So it's there. There won't there won't be going into a grocery store anymore. There won't be going into, you know, a Costco or a Walmart or a Walgreens anymore because people are just looting them like crazy. But everyone will still have to go into the office. Like... That's what's going to be insane about it. It's not going to make any sense. And they, you're right. Like, you're right. They, they're letting them steal on purpose. They're letting the street racers take over on purpose. This is 2020 all over again. And so, like, so, so, if I'm wrong... Basically, all that'll be left is people kind of like working towards that 300k number, or and then if you're in the rural areas, you know, 
trying to garden. Trying to garden all you can and barter and will be be an interesting challenge. So they're they're gonna break the back of everybody in the cities that hasn't bent the knee yet. They are going to break the back of everybody in the suburbs. And then they're going to try to break the back of everybody in the rural areas. And they're going to do that through increased costs of everything. Uh, you know, forced subscription models to repair anything. Um, which is why right to repair is so important. Uh, which Lewis Rossman's working really hard on. Um, and... And you might think, well, you know, rural areas, what are they going to do? It's like, well, they're going to come and they're going to siphon your tanks. Or they're just going to just straight up drill holes in your gas tanks, slash your tires, like burn your houses down or just burn your entire town down. Oh, we would do X, Y, Z. You're not going to do shit. You're either going to underreact or overreact. Uh, the people in the rural areas still are not ready. And there, there are conservatives, there are patriots in the suburban areas. But they have been too scared to organize. And the rural areas are too scared to organize. And they're not going to come to your house and drill your gas tank. Where your good old boys are. Uh, they're going to drill your gas tank while you're at the grocery store. Or they're just going to come completely raid your grocery store. Or they're just going to drive a car right through your corner store. Or right through your grocery They will drive a car right through your grocery store. People need to wake the fuck up. And that transitions to part two. Well, and, you know, that's if they don't just flat out shut the power in your town off. In, in, two, in 299 days... Uh, how they how they tried to bring the rural areas to their knees is by shutting power off. But uh, we know now that they don't even have to do that. They can just wait until the wind is blowing in the direction of the town they don't like and start a forest fire. And if you try to enact roadblocks to protect your town, the sheriffs come and tell you that you can't do that, even though... There's block lockdowns in the cities every night, and they don't do anything about it. So it's fucking ridiculous. Um, don't underreact, but don't overreact. You got to be able to defend your towns. Or, or yeah, just uh, conveniently wreck a train exactly, exactly next to your town <laughs> in your river. Um, they they did that. The there was like a subcontractor for the EPA that did that several years ago. They breached a a big holding facility for a bunch of toxins that was in was that in Utah, Nevada. I want to say it was in Nevada. I don't remember, but all this uh this <laughs> very toxic water came rushing down from this like kind of like mining holding area and there was no there was no alert system to warn all of like the the river tribes downstream that counted on those rivers for their fish and that you know their kids played in and stuff that oh by the way there's a wall of mining I don't know what to call it. Mining mining sewage? I don't know what to call it. Just horrible, horrible, horrible natural disaster. There's footage of it. It's like it's like a wall of toxic water. Basically got set loose because some idiot contractors dug through a wall. It was like the retaining wall. So yeah, there you're you're right. Like it doesn't have to be cutting off the power. It doesn't have to be starting fires. It depends on where you live. Like, 
the fire thing is like very real for the Pacific Northwest. But yeah, in the Midwest, there there's there's a lot of other really nasty nasty things they can do. The the train de the the, the toxins from the train derailment thing. That's just oh, that's terrible. Um, and I know, I know there's like really, really good parts of the EPA and people that really care. There's been a lot of EPA hearings and some, some of the branches are like really, really, really on the ball. Um, if I worked for the EPA, like there, oh, not, not to mention like Flint, Michigan, you know, what was the other one that just happened? Where they were, they were saying, like, this is, like, going to be worse than, like, Flint, Michigan. I can't remember what that one was now. But, like, the EPA could be a real, real, real force for good. Um, Just, you know, if, to focus on, like, protecting you know drinkable water <laughs> um yeah but that's that's a different story um i wish i wish them the best to the the good the good folks out there trying to protect and keep the water safe um but yeah water water electrical fire like there's a lot of ways that they can break down their rural areas. So I want to talk about, uh, trend. I'm going to take another break and rest my throat for a second. And then we're going to transition to housing bubbles. Yeah. So suffice it to say to close things out on the, um, what if I'm wrong? Um, some, some people that are local will survive. Um, but the, the folks that are, you know, that have like low interest rates or their houses paid off, uh, they'll eventually get brought to their knees if they can't hold a job just by sheer, um, attenuation. I can't think of the right word. Uh, just, just by the, you know, the cost of everything going up and the destruction and protein going up fuel fuel prices going up the fact that they won't be able to repair anything and then the folks in the cities are going to get brought to their knees just through like sheer survival of the fittest because retention they they won't retain people they'll just keep hiring new people forever and which is going to benefit folks who can play the risky game like i used to when i was a kid and was comfortable hopping from job to job to job to job. Well, that works great. And you make, you know, your five to 10% a year. <laughs> every, every, you know, sometimes every six months, you know, you can jump up like five, 10% every six months sometimes. But like sooner or later, your luck's going to run out and then you lose everything. You know, you've got to know when to quit and lock in a good rate. <laughs> you know, and then hope that they don't just finger snap you out of existence. So, uh, suffice it to say, I don't know what they're planning. They're evil psychos. It's either going to be something super obvious or something that we've never seen before. And that's why I say, don't prepare for, for how, you know, prepare for the what, which is, Oh, <laughs> you own your house, but they could raise property taxes very high. So I didn't, I didn't bring up people that own their houses. Um, however, that's a, that's a good segue to our sponsor. Do you want to buy a house today? I, I'll, uh, you can get a house for 10% off using my discount code. Um, I'll tell you how they raised property taxes here. I'll tell you how they tripled property taxes here tripled mocha tripled property taxes here just in a couple years and it's because the property taxes are based off your home's value 
which doesn't matter if you have your paid house or an unpaid house. It's based, some, some counties base your property taxes off your house's value. And storage units base their, their storage units off of the, the median house property value. And so, uh, and, and if you have to rent the lot, those pieces of shit, whether, whether you can pay for the house or not, or whether you're trying to sell the house on it or not, they'll tell you that you can't move the house and that you have to pay that lot price no matter what. And guess what that lot price is based off of? Like the median house property values in the area. So, not to mention HOAs and all that other bullshit. So, like, you might think, oh, you know, $100 in property taxes, that's fine. Well, you might think that, oh, my house is like tripled and so my house is worth a ton now and it's sold off and that's great. Well, A, you won't be able to afford to move anywhere because all the houses everywhere are that expensive. And B, your property taxes are going to go up proportionally <laughs> to to everything else and you're just going to get milked to death. And if you're stuck on boomer checks, you know, between that and like how much Medicare, Medicaid and pharmacy costs, like you're not going to make it. So, uh, that's, that's a good transition to my main topic, which is how the house bubble burst is going to happen. And it's really easy to say, oh, it's going to happen because everyone's going to get laid off and they won't be able to pay their houses. Uh, that's, that's not entirely all of it. And you also might say, well, it's because they're, you know, people who are getting loans for houses for over 400,000 or yeah, are having to pay extra percentage points for people who can't afford loans, who are getting loans for under 400000 and they're they're subsidizing. Yeah, it's part of it, but that's not all of it, too. Here's what happened. Um, three, three years ago, the Rona happened, and you know, you're blaming everything on that. Well, there was a lot of really, really major economic impacts because of that. One of them is... There was like a little false plateau where nobody was buying houses because everyone freaked out and they, was, they weren't sure what to do. And then everyone went to telework and the whole United States all of a sudden bought their dream homes in the middle of nowhere. So they moved out of the cities because they couldn't do anything and they could do stuff in the rural areas. And so they bought sometimes two, three homes and then they rented those out and then they chopped those houses in half and then started renting those and they bought RVs and started renting those. Well, what's happened is they paid for all those houses in cash for the most part. And a lot of those they paid 50 to 75k above asking. So what that did was is it created like this false value equivalency that Every house is worth 550000 now. So you have these fucking idiot appraisers that go appraise these houses, and these house sellers are like, oh yeah, my house is worth 550000 Sure, uh, yuck. <laughs> and then the appraiser comes, and, you know, even though they have to sign a thing saying, you know, I'm in no, I'm in no way, you know, Get get yeah! I don't even know these assholes. Somehow, magically, their house appraisals always come in at exactly the asking price, even though you know it's a thirty-year-old you know shack that's been falling apart. But because everything is so ludicrously expensive, because everything was going for cash so far above asking these assessors which work for the banks are just saying yeah it's worth whatever you know why because it makes the banks insanely rich especially when interest rates are this high or interest rates uh yeah yeah because the interest because their interest they're going to be making on fucking half a million dollar they're like, oh, this is so good. Yeah, yeah, this house is worth 
500,000, even though it's, even though you could buy, you know, a brand new motorhome for 60,000. Oh, what the fuck planet are they living on? Yeah, yeah, this 35-year-old motorhome, which you can buy new for 60000 is worth 400000 Okay. Bullshit. They don't, you know... It has, like, last-generation appliances in it. And, like, these people, they bought the house with cash. They didn't inspect it, and they haven't been keeping the house up. Sure. Okay. It's a 400... Sure. And then you go look at, like, all the appraisals of all the other 35-year-old motorhomes that are falling apart that nobody's maintained. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, 475. Sure. Totally. Yeah, 35-year-old. Sure. But it's because they know nobody can afford land anymore. Right? So you're buying a house that's barely standing up. Right? Then you know, and then they can, the assessors can openly lie on their assessment reports. They can use whatever logic they want. And, and suspiciously, suspiciously, they go with whatever the seller is pricing it at, which is fucking statistically impossible, by the way. Find that hilarious. These people aren't trained inspectors. They have no fucking clue what they're looking at. They don't dig around or look at anything or do anything. Fuck only knows if they're even there. Because they don't even have to, to take their own pictures. They can just use pictures from other stuff. You know, there's no checks and balances. Hold on. <laughs> it sounds like our justice system. Uh, I don't know about that. Our justice system seems to be... Don't punish the people who can't afford it and make examples out of everybody who actually has something to lose to try to keep them in line. Although I guess with that with houses the the equivalency to that would be let people park their RVs everywhere. And if you try to park in the wrong spot you get like a seven hundred dollar ticket. And then they'll tell you that they don't have enough money to tow the RV. To checks and balances. Oh, yeah, I know. There's no. And and the and the thing is, like, I kind of get it though, because like, if if they did assess, um, if they did assess at the right value, the ass would fall out like overnight and everybody would be upside down in debt like overnight so i get why they don't do it but that's exactly my point like there is going to be a reckoning and you might have to buy now and you might have to make some like really really careful decisions but you're gonna have to make sure that you have a job that's recession proof and AI proof, and automated drone proof too, and it, it it absolutely is an illusion, and they have to like slowly wean people off of it. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is, is that instead of slowly weaning people off of it, which would be the compassionate thing to do, and it's sort of what they're doing, but they're raising interest rates at the same time which means people can't afford to sell their house because if they have the house with amazing interest rates they can't afford to sell it and buy another house if the other house has really high interest rates even if they have some equity to sell it's not going to matter because on a five hundred thousand six hundred thousand dollar house even a percentage or two of interest rates being up is like an extra thousand dollars a month it doesn't scale like you have to have an insanely good job to live even in the middle of nowhere 
Unless you want to live like on a slope and worry about landslides wiping you out and have no land to grow anything. So worry about like retaining walls and floods and mudslides and forest fires and shit. So anyway, that's that's how the bubble's gonna happen. Um houses are overvalued by a minimum, a minimum of eighty thousand per house right now. So imagine imagine if eighty thousand dollars just like disappeared from your bank account. Not that anybody, you know, that's under three hundred thousand a year has just eighty thousand dollars sitting around. But imagine if imagine if you just lost eighty thousand dollars. Or if your house is paid off, or if you have equity, imagine eighty thousand dollars of equity just disappearing in your house. Like the people that bought in during the Rona have probably already lost that much, and they're probably going to lose. It's it's not going to go down to like twenty eight to twenty ten prices. Houses are never going to go that far down again. If they do, they'll just get bought up by a mega corporation. But the housing market is going to crash. But simultaneously, the interest rates are going to keep going up. So the houses aren't really going to be cheaper. Because the cost to borrow them is going to be insane. That being said, eventually the interest rates will go back down and you can just refi so if, if if interest rates go down even a couple percent, you know, you can you can knock like a thousand dollars off off your monthly payment. Um in pure, pure interest. Um I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial, legal, medical, dental. But um Oh my gosh. You do, you're you the best advice anyone ever gave me was Southern Purple One back during the last crash. He's like, he's he's been telling everybody this for like eight plus, nine, ten plus years. You gotta stay out of debt. You gotta get out of debt. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. It's the only way to survive. It is the single one, only, most number one thing you can do to survive. Get out of debt and stay out of debt. No matter what. Even if you are living in a tree. All right, well, there's some background noise, so I think I got most of my ideas out. Um, I think the next generation is going to be completely priced out of houses because they won't make enough. They won't be able to make enough to... They'd, they'd be able to make enough to buy the house in cash way more than they would... Than, they would ever be able to afford the interest rates. And so I think the next generation, if they don't have family with a house and if they can't just save up enough cash to just buy some land and beach their RV, which they won't be able to because they'll have to come to the office. So they'll have to drive their RV up next to the office and hope nobody burglarizes it. Um, you'll just have to hope that somebody somewhere gets land and can set up some Wi-Fi, you know, and hopefully you can convince your job to let you work from home and you can live on some land with some other, with some friends, with some Wi-Fi. And then, yeah, I, and then, yeah, it's, it's all gonna end up being universal basic income, uh, credits, credit score, social credit score, all of it on your phone with a virtual sim and ra rationed food. Um, but if I'm wrong, everyone, I, I guess if I'm wrong, everyone will just be unemployed and starved to death, <laughs> except for the couple people that are in RVs next to their jobs. Because I think, I think in my books, what I predicted is that they'll start compensating everybody 
who has a spare bedroom if they house the person in their spare bedroom. And I have heard that's coming, except they're just not going to even compensate people. They're just saying, you have a spare room, you have to house somebody in it. Um, so if you're in the rural and suburban areas, your house is going to be full of people you don't know. They've been actually doing that in Europe for years. And yeah, and you're right. They're trying that in New York now. They've tried it in Seattle before. Maybe I just made that up in Seattle. I don't know. But they've definitely are trying it in New York. They've been doing it in Europe for years. Um, if if society sort of kind of stays sort of-ish together and people are, anyone who's able to hold on to their homes, I'm pretty sure the next step is going to be that you're going to have a bunch of strangers living in your house. Uh, I think I already saw a house yesterday where what I think they did is they quote unquote finished the garage and then they sealed it off from the rest of the house and then they turned the garage into a rental. So um, that's why I don't think this is going to be a total collapse. Uh, I've been saying all along I think this is going to be a partial collapse and you had better be prepared you know, you, you could have only like one person in your household have a job potentially, and you might just have like six, seven, eight roommates, whether you're in an urban or suburban area. So get your stuff out of storage, get your debts paid off, uh, get your cars paid off, do repairs now, anything that you want to buy that you need to buy, buy it now. And uh, be ready to support like-minded people and this is going to be my last one for quite quite some time so if you like this leave a comment and tell your friends and hang in there and don't do anything crazy don't listen to anyone crazy stay calm and just you know maintain the focus of you know being being left alone and that's just pray for a miracle and remember that miracles often wait till the last second because miracles are trying to give everybody else an opportunity to do the right thing so that you don't need to use up one of your miracles. So, yeah. Uh, remember to focus on don't focus on the why just remember remember what you're prepping for doesn't matter why doesn't matter why you're prepping just focus on what you're prepping for and hang in there and Plan on not having power, plan on civil unrest, certain parts of the country, plan on not having drinkable water, and uh, your, how your, your living situations may change dramatically, so you're going to need to keep a little bit of an open mind, and you might have to develop a lot more patience. And other sources of income and people that are still bringing in income be ready to support those people because you might end up having to support way 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 more people on your income <laughs> than you used to be able <laughs> than you than, than you used to all right well i will talk to you all later and there's going to be a while between this and the next one, so if you have any topics you want me to cover, throw them down in the comments. Bye bye This is the end of the Bunker Codes transmission. Please tune in again, stay kind to each other. We're all on the same team. 73s. Bunker Code Clear.